It really is as simple as what we just sang. I sought the Lord. He heard. And He answered. I trust Him because I sought Him. And He heard. And He answered. I trust in God because there was a moment in my life where I was afraid, where I was bound, where I was in a battle, where I was unsure of which way to go next. And so I did the only thing that I knew to do. I sought the Lord. I went after Him. I reached for Him. I lifted up my hands to Him. I lifted up my voice to Him. And he heard me. And he answered me. We're going to be stuck here for a moment. But we're just going to go ahead and take any. Now, now I, I don't believe that anything that just happened was mere hype. Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. In fact, if you're wondering why we get so excited, I'll tell you why I get excited about what God has done. Because God delivered me and God set me free from a life uh, of bondage, uh, a life of, 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 of wanting to be uh, drunk or high, a life where I was bound by lust and I was bound by anger. But God uh, set me free. And so I, I want to remove any, any accusation of hype, any accusation of the sort. We're going to have a radical moment of honesty in this house right now. Anybody ready for it? How many of you have been at a low point in life or at a crossroads in life and you decided to seek the Lord? Would you lift your hand? All right. Of those hands that are lifted, how many of you? As you began to seek the Lord, did he hear you? You can feel faith building in the house right now. How many of you, after he heard you, he answered you? Ah, that's why I trust him. That's why I put my hope in him. That's why I put my faith in him. Because I sought him when I was drunk, when I was busted and disgusting. And the Lord heard my prayers. And he answered me. He answered me. He answered. Right before service, before service, in case you've ever wondered what's going on in the office, it's not like an exclusionary club or anything like that where I share a, a pre-service snack or anything. Uh, I just invite any licensed minister into my office and we have a just a quick pep talk, quick, uh, just get everybody on the same page for everything that's going on. And, and Brother Christian began to share a word from the Lord that he had for this service in this moment today. He said he, he could see God... Uh, telling him that there was an open heaven and anything that you need from God you can reach up uh, and pull down into your life today. Uh, any deliverance that is needed in the house is here today. Uh, any breakthrough that's needed in your life is here today. Uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not here today to give any quarter. Somebody came in depressed but wants to leave free, you can leave free today in the name of Jesus. Uh, you came in bound, you can leave with liberty. Uh, you came in sad, you can leave with the joy of the Lord. Uh, you came in addicted, uh, you can leave free today. Uh, today. But here's, here's the thing. God said there's an open heaven. And you have to reach up and pull it down. You have to reach for him. You have to lay hold on what you need. And you have to bring it into your life. 
God's not going to force you. God's not going to break his way into your life and shake you free. No, you're going to have to shake yourself free. You're going to have to move yourself out of your comfort zone. And so if you need something from the Lord right now, before we go any further, would you reach your hands up toward heaven? Come on, if you need a financial miracle from the Lord, would you reach your hands up toward heaven? If you need a physical miracle from the Lord, would you reach your hands up toward heaven? Ah, Come on, that's it. Pull it down into your life right now. Pull it down into your life right now. Pull it down into your life right now. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Seek the Lord. He'll hear you. He'll answer you in the name of Come on, pull it down into your world right now. Just go ahead. If you got to act it out, act it out. Reach up and pull it down into your life. Reach up and pull down peace where there's only anxiety. Reach up and pull down contentedness where there's only covetousness. Reach up and pull down the love of God where there's only doubt. Reach up and pull down power where there's only fear. Reach up and pull down healing. Healing, uh, where there's disease, uh, reach up uh, and pull down assurance uh, where there's insecurity. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Repetete 
Pray for Ashley. Pray for Ashley. Why don't you lay your hands on somebody standing next to you right now? Why don't you combine your faith with theirs and begin to pray? We're going to have the word in just a moment, but I want the body to begin to minister to the body. Uh, I want you to begin to pray one with another right now. Come on. uh, Don't hang back. Don't hold back. uh, Don't isolate. Don't set up by yourself. uh, Get your hands on each other uh, and begin to pray for one another right now. Let faith begin to swell in this place. Uh, Let a gift of faith begin to operate in this house. Uh, Let a gift of faith begin to operate in this place. Uh, In the name of Jesus. uh, In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. In Acts, Acts chapter 28, Paul, here, here's where we're at right now. Here's where we're at right now. Acts chapter 28. Paul and everybody with him has just survived a shipwreck. In a moment, it's going to be up on the screen. Everybody has survived a shipwreck. And it's, it's been a miracle from God that they're even there. It's a miracle from God that they're even out of the ocean and safe. It was God that kept them. Can I tell you, it's a miracle that Jesus' church is even here. Uh, it's a miracle. Uh, it's a, ah, I wish I had more than one or two that believe that. It's a miracle uh, that you're even here. You're even here. Uh, come on, it was not accident. It was not accident. Uh, 
Oh, it was not happenstance. Uh, It's not because you're good. Uh, It's not because you were born into this. Uh, It's not because you're somehow uh, better than anybody else. Uh, It's the grace of God uh, that took you out of a storm. Uh, It's the grace of God uh, that brought you through. Uh, And it's the grace of God uh, that has allowed you to be in this service uh, here today. It's the grace of God that found you when you hadn't been sober in seven months. It's the grace of God that found you when you had a needle in your arm. It's the grace of God that found you when you were locked up and headed to juvie. It's the grace of God that found you when you were crying and depressed that night with a gun in your hand. It's the grace of God. And they found themselves blown up on an island. They've just come out of a storm of their lives. And they're up on the island. And they got to get warm. And so everybody, prisoners, soldiers alike, begin to gather sticks to make a little fire so they can get warm. Paul included, the great Apostle Paul, the writer of two-thirds of your New Testament. He's bedraggled. I don't know if he can swim or not. He doesn't ever tell us. The ones that could swim swam to shore. The ones that couldn't held on to a piece of the ship and they floated their way in. But he comes up onto the shore. And I mean, he's just drenched. And he's cold. And he's doing all that he knows to do. He's just trying to start a fire. And the Bible says that out of a fire, there came a viper, and it latched onto his arm out of the heat and fastened onto his hand. I've come to talk to somebody today uh, that you feel like you're doing all that you know how to do, uh, and you're just surviving. Uh, You feel like you're doing everything right uh, and barely scraping by. Uh, You feel like uh, you can't get a break, uh, like life keeps coming at you this way and that way, and it's coming, uh, and it's attaching itself to you, uh, and the devil is speaking to your mind right now, uh, telling you that there's no use, uh, that it's pointless, uh, that you're wasting your time. uh. So here's Paul just doing all he knows to do, and the enemy leaps out at him and grabs onto his arm. And the barbarians, everybody point at your neighbor and say, that's you. (laughs) The barbarians look at him and they say, hey. No doubt this guy's a murderer. Hey, he survived the sea, but vengeance isn't going to let him live. See, and now now he's got a, a snake hanging off his arm. He's shivering from cold. And everybody's saying, I knew there was something wrong with you. Am I talking to anybody in this place right now? You got a snake hanging off your arm, and you can hear the voice uh, uh, of hell beginning to chirp at you and say, I I knew you were always a drug addict. Uh, I knew you were always going to be angry. Uh, I knew you were always going to be bitter. Uh, I told you your family wasn't going to make it. Uh, I told you your marriage wasn't going to make it. Uh, I told you nothing was going to work. You're hopeless. You're worthless. Why don't you give up? Uh, They're calling him a murderer. They're speaking to him. Uh, But Paul does something, uh, and it's what we're going to do in this house in just the next moment it says he shook the beast off into the fire and he felt no harm I've come to tell somebody today uh, there's a deliverance for you in this house uh, but what you're going to have to do uh, is get out of your seat uh, and begin to shake the beast off uh, begin to shake the beast off uh, begin to Come on, get out of your seat and begin to shake the beast off. Shake it off of you. Shake it into the fire of the word of God. Shake it into the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it get loose off of you. Ah, 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 ah. 
That was good. But that was about half of us. And it's about the same half that always shakes it off. You're not the ones I'm after. You're not the ones I'm worried about. Uh, I'm after the one uh, where the voice of the enemy is calling to you right now, telling you even now while I'm talking, uh, that's for somebody else. Uh, why don't we all stand to our feet across this place? I want everybody on their feet in this house. Uh, if you are able to stand, uh, I want you to stand in this place right now. Every so often, every so often, every so often, I just, I just get fighting mad. I'm not mad at any one person in this place right now, I promise you, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm not mad at any one person. Selah. Don't you ever stop dancing. Don't, I, I, we're singing songs about Jesus. And I see somebody holding her hand so she can dance. Don't you ever stop dancing. Uh, the Lord sees that and he loves that. Would you help her right now? Uh, That goes for the rest of you too. Don't you ever lose that dance. Don't you think it's got to be a fast song or we got to be singing praise? Huh? No. No, 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 my friend. Uh, the Lord gave us a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. That's why. Uh, that's why we fought for it. That's why we've labored for it. Why? Uh, because it's heaven's prescription uh, for earth's bondage. Uh, it's heaven's prescription uh, for earth's uh, 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 diagnosis. And so that was cute. That was real cute. We shook it off. And it was all right. But I'm absolutely convinced in the Holy Ghost today, if we will reach uh, full participation, there's a spirit of deliverance that's going to sweep into this house right now. Come on. Uh, I, I, maybe it's your first time here. Maybe it's your second, third, tenth, hundredth, thousandth time here. But I'm here to tell you... Uh, mm, there's a spirit of deliverance hovering right over us right now. There's a spirit of freedom that's hovering over us right now in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and we're going to shake off some things. Uh, I want you to grab the hand of somebody nearby, not your spouse. Find somebody else. Don't leave nobody alone. Don't leave nobody alone. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. If you don't want me to share your testimony, raise your hand right now. Okay, great. Met with Dale this Saturday. Dale, December 7th, 2023 is a date which is going to live in infamy. Because that was the day Dale got revelation. Huh, the God that I serve can set me free from cigarettes. And since then hasn't been back. What happened? He shook it off into the fire and said, God, uh, I don't need that no more. Uh, I'm going to put my trust in you. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. 2020, my friend James, at a low point in life, at a low point in life, reaches out, calls Bishop. Actually, we're going to have a moment of prayer for Bishop here in just a second, too. Reaches out, calls Bishop. Now, it's not been without struggle, and it's not been without trial since then. But did the Lord help you shake it off? Have you been back since? Have you been back to it since he helped you shake it off? 
All right. I'm just making sure you understood the question. Why am I saying that? Dad, how long you been set free from drugs and alcohol? <laughs> Tanya, how about you? Anybody been set free from anger? I have. I have. There's men and women raising their hands in the house. Anybody been set free from a spirit of lust? I have. Anybody been set free from a spirit of suicide and depression and darkness? I have. I sought the Lord. He heard me and he answered me. We're going to get real personal. Were there any marriages that were going through a hard time? Uh, Any relationships? Hold on a second. Look at this right here. Right here. Bishop and his wife. Marriage on the rocks. You've heard Bishop talk about it. Ready to sell everything, quit, and fade off into obscurity. But somebody sought the Lord uh, and shook it into the fires and said, no, no. I'm here to tell you today, there's deliverance. There's deliverance. What about, what about a root of bitterness? Anybody ever have bitterness pulled up out of your heart? Ha ha. I have. I have uh, resentment, anger, distrust uh, uprooted out of my life. Uh, All of those things uh, can be removed out of your life today. uh, Today. Anybody ever been healed uh, of childhood wounds? Memories that you thought were going to haunt you for your entire life. Uh, You'll never forget that moment uh, when that man or that woman did that to you. uh, But you brought it uh, under the blood uh, and the sting of it has been removed. uh, And the Lord has redeemed uh, and restored uh, and set free. And then, and then the real testimony, the things that we don't tell anybody else about, that's just between me and my God. The dumb things, the stupid thoughts, the stupid actions that I would be mortified if you ever found out. Those things, uh, the ones the devil tries to resurface to your mind, uh, ah, those things. Is there anybody that's shaken off those things uh, and you've given them over to God and you've said, God, uh, I let go of all of it. Well, here's what we're going to do in this house right now. We're just going to do what the Bible says Paul did. See, the fire, we're, we're not about to light a fire in this place. Don't worry. There's already a fire burning here. Okay, it's the fire of the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist said that one would come that would baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All right, what you feel in this house is not hype. It's not my preaching ability because I'm not even preaching. I'm just I'm just speaking what the Lord is putting in my mind at every second of this moment. Okay, what you're feeling in this house is the Spirit of Almighty God uh, trying to build up faith inside of somebody's heart to believe uh, that there's deliverance in this place, ready to move right now. And so we're just going to grab the hands of the people next to us. Uh, We're going to lift them up into the air uh, and we are going to begin to shake it off. Uh, Now I don't want you to be cute. I don't want you to be complacent. Uh, I don't want you to be quiet. Uh, I want you to shake it off. 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 Come on. Uh, Shake it off. 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 Off, uh, shake it off, uh, shake it off for you. Uh, shake it into the fire, shake it into the fire, shake it into the fire.
Come on, shake off your complacency. Uh, shake off your prayerlessness. Uh, shake off apathy. Uh, shake off fear. Uh, shake it off. Uh, I know you're busy, uh, but you're not too busy. Uh, you're not too busy. Uh, you're not too busy. Uh, shake off the bondage. Uh, shake it off uh, and be free. Uh, shake it off uh, and be delivered. Uh, shake it off. I believe, I believe that through praise, I believe that through prayer, you can shake off uh, your childhood. Yeah. You can shake off your upbringing. Uh, you can shake off the labels that the enemy wants to put on you. Uh, you can shake off the stigma that hell wants to attach to you. Uh, you can shake off the, the labels that society has put on you. Uh, you can shake it all off. But look at the next verse. How be it? When they saw... Or they looked that he should have swollen and fallen down dead. These are the same barbarians. Point your neighbor and say, that's you. Bunch of barbarians. They were saying, this guy's a murderer. And now they're just watching. I mean, he's going to fall over dead at some point, right? I guess. They're just looking and they're saying, Cole, some point Cole's going to fail. Some point he's, man, this guy, he's going to swell up. It's like getting married. You gain 15 pounds immediately. At some point he's going to fall over. Don't you dare let that be on your tongue about somebody in this church. See, we've seen people come in this house and, and God work in their lives in a powerful way. And then slip back into some bondage. But don't you let that be on your tongue. Don't you let that be coming out of your mouth. No, I believe the best. And I'm going to speak the best. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak deliverance. I'm going to speak breakthrough. I'm going to speak freedom. And so after they look at Paul a while, Paul just goes back to doing what he knows to do. I'm picking up sticks. I'm lighting the fire. I'm back to praying. I'm back to serving. I'm back to, I'm back to working in the kingdom of God. They changed their minds about him. And he goes from a murderer, and now they decide he's a God. You talk about a 180. But I'll tell you this, if you'll shake it off into the fire and you'll get rid of it out of your life, it doesn't matter how much of the town knew you as a drunk. It doesn't matter what your reputation has been in Pentecost. It doesn't matter what you've always been known of. There's going to come a day when you've walked in faithfulness and you've served the Lord. Even your family, which thinks you're crazy, your family, which thinks you're nuts, they're going to look at you and they're going to be able to say, Hey, uh, it's only God that can do that. It's only God that can do that. It's only God uh, that can deliver. It's only God that can set free. Hallelujah. 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 And so the enemy has tried to latch on to many in this room to convince you, to convince you. We had a message in tongues just a moment ago, and the interpretation came. And God said, those are not the words that I want coming out of your mouth. I want faith coming out of your mouth. But when the asp, when the snake, the viper is hanging off of your arm, he's injecting into you his venom. That venom is doubt. Huh? That venom is lies. That venom is fear. The reason the enemy is fighting so hard for your mind is because if he can get your mind, he's got your mouth. 
And if he controls your mind, he controls what comes out of your mouth. And the reason that some haven't even lifted their voice in this place today or haven't even said thank you Jesus one time is because the enemy is still locked in on your mind and you refuse to shake him off into the fire. And so your mouth is closed. But if you'll shake it off today... God is going to loose the string of your tongue and you're going to be able to speak faith. You're going to be able to speak faith. You're going to be able to speak life. Don't you let death be in your tongue. The Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Out of the abundance of your heart your mouth speaks. And so if death is the only thing that pours out of your mouth, that means that death is the only thing alive in your heart. If self-hatred is the only thing that pours out of your mouth, that means that self-hatred is the only thing that's in your heart. If constant doubt is the only thing that comes out of your mouth, that means that doubt is the only thing that's in your heart. But God wants you to have a better word in your tongue so that you can declare what thus saith the Lord. Romans, Romans chapter 10 and verse 8 says this. It says this, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The champion shared it before church. It's near. Just reach up and grab it. God spoke to us in tongues and interpretation. You begin to speak faith. And there's our verse right there. It's nigh you. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. See, we shook off the influence over our mind. And we sang just a moment ago, I trust in God. God, because he heard me and he answered me. He heard me and he answered me. But now we're going to move past a place uh, of just of just rejoicing about what God has done. Now, now we're going to counter uh, what has been done to us. Now we're going to counter every obstacle uh, and every roadblock of the enemy because the word uh, is nigh you even in your mouth. Uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, uh, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If your mouth cannot confess Jesus Christ as victorious in your life, then he's not victorious in your life. And it's not his fault. His arm is not shortened. His ear is not heavy. He has all power and authority. He has all might and dominion. Every demon in hell trembles. Ah, it says it, well, it's in it. It's in 1 Timothy 2 and 19, or James 2 and 19. I'm sorry. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Is there anybody that believes in one God in this place right now? Is there anybody that believes that Jesus is the one true living God in this house? I'm, it's, it's important that you lift your hand. Uh, it's important that you say amen right there. It is important. It is important. What you're doing is confessing it out of your mouth. What you're doing is confessing it out of your mouth. See, if you believe that, hell also believes that. But they do something additional. They tremble. See, we're up here trying to shake it off. And hell's down there shaking. (laughs) And so what we're going to do is we're going to lift our hands in just a moment. And we're going to begin to make a confession in this place. Jesus, you're the God of my circumstance. Jesus, you're the God of this city. You're the God of this region. Of course he knows that. I'm not telling him that. I'm telling hell that. 
and I'm confessing it out of my mouth to demonstrate that I believe it in my heart, uh, and I'm going to walk as if I believe it in my heart. It is very important that your mouth speaks in a church service because it's demonstrating what's in your heart. Amen. And so whatever situation you were just shaken off a moment ago, uh, we're going to lift our hands together in this place. Would you lift your hands? And we're going to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord uh, over every situation. Uh, We're going to confess that he's Lord over every fear. Uh, Come on, would you lift your hands in this place right now? Uh, And would you confess Jesus? Uh, With your mouth, confess him. Uh, The devils believe they're already trembling. Uh, But would you confess him? Uh, Lord, uh, we believe your word. Uh, Lord, we believe your promises. Uh, Lord, we believe what you've spoken. Uh, Every prophecy, uh, every promise. uh, Every word will come to pass. Everything will come to pass. In the name of Jesus, I believe, God, there's a Holy Ghost breakthrough in Watertown. Come on, begin to confess it right now. Begin to confess it out of your mouth right now. I believe there's a Holy Ghost breakthrough in Millbank. I believe... I believe there's a Holy Ghost breakthrough in Webster. I believe there's a Holy Ghost revival in Brookings. I believe your lost family is going to be saved. I believe your body's going to be healed. I believe your kids are going to serve the Lord. I believe there's going to be breakthrough in your marriage.